the best thing I ever personally built for mountain bikes is named Blowout. It's a pump track designed for little kids, but it's not actually a pump track. It's a downhill track. If you roll in from this top part over here with the rocks, you basically don't have to pedal or pump or anything to get through the whole track. And then it's just a short push to get back up to the top and take another lap. For little kids, that's really intuitive, it's really fun, and it's really rewarding. And that's why I built it this way. But this pump track was always meant to be expanded upon. Not only is it made for two-year-olds on balance bikes, but it's also made for dad. And I've been getting a little bit bored with it. I would really like to expand upon it. And that's what we're going to do today. But first, I wanna tell you why I think this is the greatest thing that I've ever built. The reason is simple, we use it all the time. I've been using this every day with my daughter and her friends and family. We even put lights out here at night so we can keep riding. And because it's gotten so much traffic, the tires have packed down the tread tremendously. And so water just rolls right off of it. It's like concrete, super smooth, very low maintenance. And that makes blowout very different than other things on Berm Peak. I don't wake up in the morning and say, hey, you know what I'm gonna do today? I'm gonna go ride the Teeter Cannon and risk my life. I do that for videos. This I actually ride on and off camera, and so the proof is in the pudding. It's the thing I ride most, it's the best thing I've ever built. So back to expanding upon it. So this lip over here is kind of the crux of the trail. After the berm, you roll down, you gain a little bit of speed, you go up this, and then you go down the straightaway. I left this straightaway here for a few reasons. First of all, kids need a breather. A two-year-old on a balance bike, they wanna be able to go fast and feel good, but you also want them to be safe. And then also the straightaway is there because I've always planned on building additional things here. When I crank at this lip, I yank back and get some air and then there's no lander. I'm just landing to flat. Would be really sweet to make it a double, but then kids can't ride it. And so what I wanna build today is a hump that comes after it that we can land down the backside of. We can use that hump as a lander and little kids can roll over it. Now I could just take the excavator, get a couple of scoops of dirt from some hole in the backyard and make a dirt hump, but that wouldn't be much fun and it wouldn't look cool. When it comes to features for little kids, the emotional component of it, how it looks, how it feels when you ride over it, is really, really important. Even for adults, that's important. A great example is that train car at the rail yard. It's just a little rolly thing inside of it, but it's really fun because you're going through a train car. And so I'm gonna make this feature a combination of dirt and wood so that it looks cool. You hear the planks when you're rolling over it, and it feels like you just did something more than what you actually just did. So it's gonna look something like that. Let's go plan it out. <laughs> Be doable with more speed, but do I really wanna ride that fast around little kids? All right, now we're talking. I'm glad I did a little bit of testing with the Riley ramp because this, I believe, is a good balance of fun and doability. And so now I can grab some supplies and start digging up my pump track. If these guys look familiar, it's because they are off cuts. Whenever I make a lip form, I'm cutting pieces like this out and I save them because you can use the opposite. We can use this like a roller. It's a 10 and a half foot radius, or actually, I think this was from the oak barrel wall ride. I don't know what this radius is, but it looks good. So like I said before, this stuff is like concrete. And so we gotta break it up so that we can dig into it so that we can reuse the dirt. None of this over here is gonna be a riding surface anymore. And so we don't really need it. I don't have to dig a hole to get dirt. I can use this good clay right off the top. So why am I painstakingly saving all the dirt and putting it off to the side so I can get to it? 
Isn't there a lot of dirt around here that I could use? We can't build mountain bike trails and pump tracks and jumps out of any old dirt because if it's got organics in it, it's gonna rot away, it's gonna settle, it's gonna be mushy. You gotta have just straight up clay. And I went through a lot of trouble, if you've watched the pump track video, in procuring all of this clay to build the track out of. It took me several days, even with the machine. So I can get this pretty close with the wood, but there's gonna be little gaps and transitions and things that I'm gonna have to fill in. And so I'm gonna be able to use this dirt. It's right here, it's easy, it packs well. And see, the thing is, all the clay that's already here has been compacted really, really well, and that takes work. And so I'm not just digging a hole straight down and pulling clay out. I wanna shave it down so I only remove as much material as I need. Yep, that's what we want. These are not gonna be providing any structural strength to this. This is just a way to tack it all together so I can see what it's gonna look like. Everything's gonna bear down on it. And from here, I can kind of make adjustments and move it as one unit to get it right before we seal it all up with dirt and make it permanent. Now, my line of thinking here was put down this board to make these all level. This is ground contact rated, and so it shouldn't rot under the ground. Then we're gonna do some dirt work over there to make everything nice and smooth, and all the boards should meet right up to the dirt. Another thing I have to keep in mind, when it rains, water's gonna go in between the planks and it's gonna dam up right over here. And so I have to make sure that all the water under this feature makes its way off the side of the trail. So I have to take a chunk out over here and any additional dirt that I remove from here for whatever reason has gotta be angled such that it doesn't collect water because then we're gonna have mosquitoes, we're gonna have the track soaking and we're not gonna have a good time. So I wanna anchor this to the ground because we're gonna be landing on it. It's gonna take some abuse. So I'm gonna hammer these spikes into the ground and then use fasteners to attach it. Only problem is if you hit this with a hammer enough times, hard enough, it's just gonna split wide open. And so Andrew made me these post driver caps. Thank you, Andrew. He mailed these to me. I had tried to make one on the channel and a whole bunch of you started making post driver caps and sending them to me. But Andrew's the only one that sent me a variety of them. This one is two by four sized. And so we can bang these two by fours into the ground, hopefully without splitting them apart. Unfortunately, the same thing happened to this post driver cap as happened to the one that I made, which is it split apart into pieces because I'm hitting it with a sledgehammer and it's welded together. But it's a thought that counts. And so there's another one in there that I've been trying not to dent up because it looks so awesome. Let's see if that one splits apart. All right, this one did not break. But whether or not the one you sent me broke, I really appreciate the thought and appreciate you watching my videos. So we've got this all framed up, it's adjusted. I'm ready to install the planks. We have a mixture of oak and locust over there just from my wood pile. I'm gonna try and use it all up on this project. Now there are lots of different materials you could use for this. You could just lay plywood over it and bend it and it'll be super smooth. That to me doesn't really fit out here. I am actually concerned with aesthetics and so planks are gonna look really good. They also tend to be grippier. And so let's get cutting. So a lot of my international audience asks, why do you guys use imperial measurements in the United States? Are you guys stupid or something? And no, anybody who's doing science or chemistry is using metric, but carpentry is still better in imperial because a foot is basically base 12. And so you can divide it by four, you can divide it by three, two, six, whatever. And it's just, no, I'm just kidding, it's shit. Ah, God. 
proceeds to pick up the boards and do the exact same thing. Planks are on, it looks super cool. I'm starting to get excited. But there's one more thing I have to do here before the dirt work. I adjusted the drain over here because I realized we were just gonna bury it and I have to keep dirt from getting in there. And so, I don't know, I gotta find some rocks and work this out and then we're gonna pack this dirt in. Consistently during these projects, I end up with not enough dirt to do what I want to do. In this case, I had way too much dirt, and so I spread it around the track in areas I want to improve. Some of it I chucked, but in any case, we are done here, or at least as done as we're going to be today. It's time to test this. So should we test it on the dirt jumper or the BMX? I'm thinking the BMX because that's what I've been riding lately. I leave it out here 24 seven, so let's go. Nice. It's little, right? If it was up to me, I would have built a big steep lander so that I could pop up, but it's for little kids. And so it's gotta be mellow. It's gotta be good for everyone. And that's a lot more fun for me. The design of this is such that if and when my kids start getting air, they can just keep going further and further until they actually catch the transition over here safely. It's like a big case pad. I might even name it that, the case pad. And speaking of which, I think there's just enough daylight left for me to show this to the little one. Check it out. Look at this. <laughs> you wanna try and ride it? Okay, let's go. You have a bridge now, Rebecca. Ooh. It's a ladder bridge. A ladder bridge? Yep. Whoa! Where did I go? Whoa! Okay. <laughs> so one thing I mentioned is that when you make it look cool, when you make it look like there's some doing to get over it, kids love it. It's cooler than riding over dirt for some strange reason. Gets kids amped and... You get out of a trail what you put into it, and so I spent the day building a little tiny bridge that just doesn't really look that technically difficult, but actually adds some fun to the trail. Thank you, Daddy. You're welcome. Come on, I'm coming. Whoa. Come on, Daddy. So we've built a lot of features over the year on this channel, but this has got to be the easiest thing that I have ever built. The smallest, most nothing feature. And you know what's ironic? It's gonna get used more than anything else that I've built on Berm Peak. And so I'm gonna enjoy it. And I don't feel bad about making a whole video about it. My mission is to make sure that when I'm 90 years old, there's still people mountain biking. And so the only way we're gonna do that is starting them young. And so this sweatshirt and t-shirts available on cognitivemtb.com. They're screen printed right here in North Carolina and they're shipped five minutes from my house. Don't get one to support me, get one because you deserve it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it. And if you wanna build a pump track like this for your kids or for yourself, even though it's not really a pump track, check out the video where I built this. You can learn a lot about clay and packing stuff down. But if you didn't learn anything in this video, I hope you at least found it entertaining. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time.